Hey USMJ traders, so just wanted to break down a little bit and explain for a lot of people that are confused by what Todd Harrison posted and thanks Todd for posting this info. And he got this info from CXXIF chair Bruce McDonald. So essentially saying that there's arbitrage going on, long story short, arbitrage going on and illiquid OTC markets allowing for big money to manipulate things and make money doing so. So essentially, it's my understanding that they are selling down the individual US MSOs into the close to create an artificially low price on the ETF. And NAV here is net asset value. So artificially low close on the ETF net asset value. And they are short the MSO exposure. And then cash subscription, I assume that's at the end of the day. I don't know if if Todd could clarify, that'd be great. But at the end of the day, they then go long MSOS, the ETF, at that artificially lower value. And then the next day when things normalize, they make money on MSOS going back up. So the impact arbitrage, they make money. It's paid for by lower MSOS performance, the ETF, than would otherwise occur with that end of the day whack down every day. And you remember Canadian MJ, when we were in blue sky breakout there, and obviously we're on the NASDAQ and NYSE, but we would close at the high of the day and we would gap up open. And the, the USMSO bull move that we're seeing right now, even though it's in blue sky, we're not seeing that kind of massive move up. And essentially this could be part of the reason as to why it's a bit more contained and it's a bit more slow and steady as to what we saw with the strong closes and strong follow through back when Canadian MJ was doing it. But added volatility, destabilized pricing. And again, it's the, it's the OTC lack of liquidity that's allowing bigger money to take advantage of this little loophole, we'll call it. So the cure is to essentially have the ETF MSOS say, no, nah, we're not going to allow you to buy back in cheaper for more with these cash subscriptions to allow you to keep benefiting from this manipulation of the price, so to speak. So just to look at that on the price, on the charts, I should say, GTBIF had the best example on Thursday with just an all out dump. And if you look at the last four minutes, I'm not gonna zoom in, but the last four minutes that day, tons of dollar volume. Well, not tons, relatively tons, $2 million, but big picture, $2 million, you know, can be one individual. So dumping it down on market orders at the end of the day. And just like that, the next day, V-shaped recovery and right back to where we were. So three to 4% drop, 3% recovery, and someone cleaning up on that. Now what changed, the good guys fought back on Friday. Friday in the last half hour of trading, very different close for USMJ names, for the MSOs. And you can see that right here. So they started to try to do it again, it looked like here, at right before 3 p.m. And then right after 3.30, and actually it's a bit different timing here on GTBIF, Looks like 315, 310 to 315. This is someone saying, nah, we see your game. We know what's happening now. And we're going to squeeze you out of that. And a bunch of bull volume protected that drop from happening. And essentially what I see happening at the end of the day, Friday, the last 30 minutes is someone attempting the same shenanigans and getting burned this time. So the question now is, have they learned their lesson and they've gotten burned and now they're going to stop now that there's being a light exposing this. So here's CURLF. Look at the volume in the last 30 minutes here. Clearly bulls ensuring a strong close. TCNNF increasing bull volume, strong close at the high of the day. And CRLBF was the most notable, just a massive 3% bull move. There's your volume kicking in. And this is the good guys, the heroes of the movie saying, nope, we're fighting back. Not going to happen again. So very strong close, nice bull momentum. And MSOS, the ETF, look at how we closed right up at the high of the day, and that's notable. So bulls still in complete control. Blue sky breakout on some of our names here. Little daily higher lows being established. A lot of people on the sidelines not really getting a chance to make any entry. The last real daily consolidation that we saw at this point was two weeks ago, and not a whole lot of opportunity for bulls to be jumping in on consolidation at this point. We'll continue to watch the broader market, the S&P 500. Again, just like Canada, when Canada was running, going crazy in blue sky breakout leading up to the first day of sales, the S&P 500 was in a blue sky environment and that was ideal scenario. And here we are again where that's the case 
And in my opinion, for us to see any notable weekly consolidation on these names at this point, it's going to require, in my opinion, some more notable broader market weakness. Because as far as, you know, short term reasons why the sector itself will pull back, if we didn't sell the news on Friday with the House vote, then that's not going to do it, in my opinion. And if you look at Canadian MJ names, Friday afternoon, they sold the news. Here's your run up. There's your rejection from the high of the day on CGC and then a dump to a new low of the day. And if you look at all those major names, ACB, Cron, APHA, they all sold off. And this, in my opinion, is a sell the news reaction and no major follow through. You know, they recovered into the end of the day. The S&P 500 stayed fairly strong. So again, major impact on the S&P 500, but we didn't see the sell the news reaction on the US side that we did see on the Canadian side. And in my opinion, that's just because there's more traders. Again, what I'm doing, I'm trading Canadian MJ names and I'm holding US MJ names. I think a lot of other people are doing that as well. So it's certainly exciting, fun times. And now we're looking towards January and the Senate in Georgia, because we know bills will continue to be dead on arrival in the Senate as long as the Republicans hold that lead. That's what we're going to anticipate because we just watched four years of it. All right, have a good weekend. Hopefully that's some insight. And by no means am I an expert on what Todd and Bruce are saying here. So if I made any mistakes, chime in and let's get down to it as far as exactly what's going on.